Finals SAQ65, Propofol-Related Infusion Syndrome. A. What is Propofol-Related Infusion Syndrome, please, and what are its clinical effects? Propofol-Related Infusion Syndrome is a life-threatening syndrome associated with propofol use, usually at high doses for prolonged durations in susceptible individuals. It is primarily marked by severe cardiorespiratory depression along with high levels of metabolic acidosis. The chief systems of body affected by PRIS are cardiovascular, metabolic, hepatic, renal, and musculoskeletal. Propofol blocks complex 1, complex 4, cytochrome C, and acylcarnitine transferase in the mitochondria. Propofol dust uncouples intracellular oxidative phosphorylation and inhibits electron flow through the electron transport chain. Faulty operation of the ETC results in reduced mitochondrial ATP production and cell death. Metabolic manifestations are a result of tissue-level hypoxia. Propofol, a lipid emulsion, also leads to the production of long, medium, and short-chain fatty acid metabolites. FFAs from lipolysis of adipose tissues become the chief energy source for musculoskeletal and cardiovascular cells during metabolic stress. These FFAs undergo beta-oxidation inside the mitochondria to generate acetyl coenzyme A needed for the Krebs cycle. The Krebs cycle leads to generation of electrons via NADH and FADH2, which enter the electron transport chain for ATP production. At high dosages, propofol hinders the pathways of these electrons, as mentioned earlier, lowering the transmembrane potential, reducing ATP production, leading to cellular hypoxia, metabolic acidosis, free fatty acid accumulation, and cell death. Long-term administration of propofol leads to increased serum melonyl carnitine, which is responsible for inhibition of CPT1, which is a mitochondrial transport protein. Unlike medium and short-chain fatty acids, long-chain fatty acids cannot move by diffusion and require CPT1 to get transported into the mitochondrial matrix. The impairment of their movement leads to long-chain fatty acid accumulation in the mitochondrial matrix and impact fatty acid oxidation. High FFAs and triglycerides lead to fat overload syndrome, wherein hydrolysis isn't able to balance out the increased triglycerides in the circulation. These lipids get collected in the blood and are absorbed by the reticuloendothelial system, leading to hepatomegaly, splenomegaly, jaundice, coagulation disorders, etc. FFA accumulation also precipitates ventricular arrhythmias. Long-chain acylcarnitine esters require CPT1 for transport. These are unable to traverse into the muscular tissue cells, leading to muscular necrosis and rhabdomyolysis. Clinical effects of PRIS Cardiovascular Reduced ATP and increased FFA levels leads to cardiac dysfunction and arrhythmias, such as coughed ST elevation in V1 to V3 and widened QRS, a Brugada-like syndrome, atrial and ventricular fibrillation, supraventricular tachycardia, and bundle branch blocks. Propofol's antagonistic effects on beta-adrenoceptors and calcium channels leads to reduced sympathetic tone, radicardia, reduced myocardial contractility, hypotension, and possibly asystole. Metabolic effects of PRIS includes lactic acidosis, hypertriglyceridemia, hyperkalemia, lipemia, and hyperthermia. Metabolic acidosis further worsens hyperkalemia due to increased transcellular shift. Hepatic effects include hepatomegaly due to hepatic congestion, cardiac failure and lipid accumulation, steatosis, increased ALT, AST, and GGT levels, and liver failure. The hypoperfusion, hypoxia, sepsis, hypermetabolic states, and vasopressor therapy frequently involved in PRIS also contributes to the impairment of liver function. Rhabdomyolysis may lead to myoglobinuric AKI. B. List the risk factors for PRIS. This includes high infusion rates, more than 4 mg per kg per hour, for long duration, more than 48 hours. Young age, as children are more susceptible due to reduced glycogen stores, causing increased endogenous lipolysis. Critical illness, such as severe head injuries and sepsis. Increased exogenous or endogenous catecholamines. Raised catecholamine levels, for example in critical illness, leads to hypermetabolic state. Hence, more rapid plasma clearance of propofol, insufficient sedation, and this may lead to increased dosage. Freeze also leads to acidosis, which reduces vasomototone, 
and increases the need for vasopressors. High exogenous or endogenous glucocorticoids. Steroids activate ubiquitin proteosome pathway that causes muscle rupture due to myofilament disruption. Steroids also alter gene transcription, which lowers mitochondrial energy output by altering mitochondrial pathways and function. Heart failure is also a risk factor. Propofol antagonizes beta receptors and calcium channels, further depressing cardiac function. High ratio of lipid to carbohydrate intake. Lipid overload from propofol or parenteral nutrition exacerbates accumulation of free fatty acids, which are pro-arrhythmogenic. Adequate carbohydrate intake is required to suppress endogenous lipolysis in ill patients to reduce further increases in FFAs. Inborn errors of fatty acid oxidation is a risk factor for PRIS. PRIS causes defects within the mitochondrial respiratory chain. Hence, patients with mitochondrial diseases are at increased risk of PRIS. C. What specific lab findings may be expected in the case of PRIS? This includes raised triglyceride levels, increased CK, increased lactate with accompanying acidosis, and evidence of acute kidney injury, such as hyperkalemia, increased urea and creatinine levels. D. How may PRIS be prevented and managed? Measures to prevent PRIS includes aim to keep infusion rates of propofol less than 4 mg per kg per hour. If infusion rates are high, limit duration to less than 48 hours. Consider usage of alternative drugs for sedation. Use a more concentrated propofol formulation to reduce lipid load. Ensure adequate carbohydrate supply. Monitor markers of onset of syndrome, for example, via ECG, blood pressure, ABG, CK, lactate, triglyceride levels, electrolyte, etc. And increase staff education on priests to increase awareness and early detection. Management of priests includes retaining a high index of suspicion for possibility of the syndrome to facilitate timely management, stop propofol and use alternative sedation, pacing, inotropes, vasopressors and ECMO may be required, renal replacement therapy to manage lactic acidosis, AKI, and to clear propofol and its metabolites, hyperkalemia can be treated with calcium, insulin, beta-2 agonists, potassium binding resins, and renal replacement therapy. Overall, 35.8% pass rate. These are my references. Thank you.